there's a particular personality that is in charge. Okay? So another thing that happened in this, in this verse when we, uh, when we heard about sons, the combined sons of Mitra and Varuna with Urvashi. Okay? Because, um, you know, there's a particular medical procedure that is followed these, it's called IVF. Okay? So in, the, in which case when a, when, a first, when, a, when a couple is having trouble having children, because there's some issue somewhere, mechanical issue, they take the secretions of the male and the female, they put them in a test tube, test tube babies, and then they put the embryo back into the, in the womb of the mother, right? And, but this particular thing happened millions of years ago already, where uh, Mitra and Varuna were uh, preserved their their seed basically in a pot and two sons, Agastya and Vashishta, great personalities, Agastya, Agastya and Sri Vashishta, the guru of Lord Ramchandra, appeared in that way. They were both IVF babies. Okay? The first IVF babies in the universe were millions of years ago. Okay? Another thing is that Tukadev was talking about the genealogy and the, and, the, and the instruction. He says, thus we have heard. In other words, Shukadeva Goswami is not making anything up. So whenever we are speaking about the Bhagavatam or the Bhagavad Gita, we, there is no need for us to make anything up. It's, it's actually quite dangerous for us to make anything up. A lot of Prabhupada said this, Prabhupada said that, but insist on references. And if there isn't a reference, you can take it with a pinch of salt. Right? Don't, don't go with Prabhupada this, Prabhupada that. It will continue to happen. My spiritual master said this, my said that. You know? And please, no speculation, thus we have heard. What we have heard, and maybe a little bit of realization that is in line with what we have heard, but no speculation. Okay, that's very important. Uh, in this chapter, in a very form, the pastime of Lord Bhamanadev was mentioned how he was born to Aditi, and Bhamanadev was born as, a, as one of the Adityas. So Aditi's sons are known as Adityas, one of the 12 Adityas, right? And then it described how the Daitya family are described. Daitya means the children of Diti. Children of Aditi are demigods, children of Diti are Asuras. So, Daityas and, and there is also Dhanavas, there is another, another. And, simply enough, Kashyapuni is the father of both. The Daityas and the Adityas are both sons of the same father. Okay? So, whatever happened in the Mahabharata is not new, it has been happening since time immemorial. A same family splits up. So, this can happen sometimes among devotees so we should not be super worried about the such kinds of things because it's a it's a it's it's how the Lord enacts his pastimes. Okay? In the Prahlad mentioned, right, in this in this uh, Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha are mentioned as being killed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, liberated actually. Right? Um, Rahu is mentioned, the one whose head was cut off by the Sudarshan Chakra of the Lord, but because it swallowed the nectar and the nectar was still in his throat, he did not fully die of the head remained alive basically. And that, that personality is still around, who is in charge of the eclipses, the solar eclipses, that person is in charge of the eclipses. Right? It's also very, very interestingly it's mentioned the demoniac tendency to eat meat is also in this chapter. But Ilvala, who is one of the one of the directors, served Vatapi his brother. So they had a they had a scheme going on. So Ilvala and Vatapi were brothers. So Vatapi had a special form of becoming a ram to be a sheep. Ram, male goat, male sheep is called ram. He could become that, and then Ilvala would cook, cut and cook this uh, particular demon, who would then bring some unsuspecting passerby and feed them, feed him that, uh, feed that person that meat. And then uh, Vatapi had a special form of reconstituting himself inside of where he had been eaten. So if you look at all the horror movies and all the alien movies and all that stuff hanging out there. This is there in the Bhagavatam. Okay? <laughs> so Vatapi would come out. He would basically tear the body of the person who had, who had been served that meal and come out and would feast on the unsuspecting guest. <laughs> right? That's what they would do. That was their mode of um, they served, they served the same meal to Agastya. Agastya, even though he's a Brahmana, he, he knew what was going on. He knew the scam. He had to the scam. So he actually digested Vatapi. Vatapi could not reconstitute himself inside of Agastya. Okay, so that, that, that was that. Then it's also mentioned uh, in the Krishna book, you will read the pastime of Banasura, you know, Banasura, the great demon, um, who had the boon that Lord Shiva would personally protect him. 
right? And so when Krishna attacked the city of Banasura, Banasura was first the the Lord Shiva first appeared and fought a battle with with Sri Krishna in the in the Krishna book. You will read about it. Very interesting, very fun battle where uh, Krishna made Lord Shiva yawn. He threw the yawning weapon and. Lord Shiva could not fight because he was continuously yawning. Continuously yawning. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a beautiful pastime. But it has briefly mentioned here how Shiva is still protecting Manasura. Manasura is now a great devotee. Because why is that? Because he is Maharaj's son. Maliyuha is a great uh, Mahajan. Huh? He is one of the 12 Mahajan. So you can see that devotees can appear anywhere. They don't have to appear in some big Brahmana family or whatever. They can appear anywhere. So our job in the Krishna consciousness movement is to find those devotees, wherever they might have appeared. They might have appeared in black bodies, white bodies, yellow bodies, doesn't matter. Handicapped bodies, smart bodies, not so smart bodies, right? They might be poor, rich. We don't know. So when we are out on Harinam Sankirtan, when we are trying to distribute books, we don't make distinctions between, oh, this person looks like we take the book. We approach every single person. Because devotees can appear anywhere. Okay? So as Specifically, the last part of this chapter talks about the appearance of the 49 Maruts. And the Maruts are the different kinds of beings, you know. So there are different kinds of fires. So there are in the Yajna, there's a particular kind of fire. In the funeral, there's a particular kind of fire. The cooking in the kitchen is a particular kind of fire. There are different fires who come and form their duty. Similarly, there are different winds. There are, diff there are winds that increase lust. And there are winds that bring detachment. There are winds that change the season. There are different winds. There are 49 maruts described. So, for example, the Inuit have how many words for snow? 50. Okay? Because that's very important to them. That's their life, right? So, in the in the Bhagavatam and the other Puranas, you will also find different kinds of waters, different kinds of winds, different kinds of fires, different kinds of earths, different kinds of... Like, there, there are qualities of everything that are described. And there are deities in charge of all this. We'll come to that. Okay? So, then... How did the 49 Maruts come about? So, Diti was pregnant with a child, uh, who was Kashyap's child, and Diti had actually prayed for a child who would kill Indra. And Kashyap Muni was, uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that. So, he, Indra divided this embryo into seven, and then he divided the embryo again, and each one into seven, so he had 49. So, this is something that has not been accomplished today. They haven't been able to take an embryo and split it into two babies. We may try to do it, but it's already done. Even if we managed it, it's already been done, Indra has already done it. Right? He made one into one. Right? So he did that. Okay, this Diti's desire or ambition, this is the topic of today's class. Uh, just an introduction is her desire or to kill Indra. So anybody can have different kinds of ambition. I want to put that person now. You know, we can have different kinds of ambition. This was Diti's ambition because she was hurt by the killing of her two sons, Hiranyakashipu, and Ali Mother loves. Her, her children very much, so she was very upset and angry, and she pleased Kashyap. She kind of cheated him a little bit, and then she got a boon from him. And then Kashyap was wondering how I can give her a boon because he had already given her the two sons, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. He didn't want to repeat that performance. He was like thinking about that I can, you know, purify her consciousness. So he gave her a particular sacrifice to be done for 30 days for Pumsawana. Okay, so that actually confirmed. Um, in this verse, there is a connection between the Shiva Bhagavatam and the Holy Bible. Bible okay? In the book, there is a story of Adam and Eve, where um, Eve was made from a part of Adam's body. Okay? So in this, Shukadeva Goswami said, says, woman was created for the better half of a man's body, which is another reason why, you know, we, it's not just a when, 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 a, when, a, when a couple refers to, you know, when a man refers to wife, he refers to her as his better half. It's not just a figure of speech. It is actually coming from Bhagavad okay? So a woman was created that way. So there's a very beautiful description about the relationship between husband and wife. You know, and what should be the relationship between husband and wife. And how it should be. There's a lot of subtle nuances we don't have the time to get into between Kashya Puni and between Diti. You know, and in general, the duty of the husband and wife is to figure out how we can lead the other person towards Krishna. That's that's the goal of, of a marriage relationship, actually. You know, lead each other back to Krishna. Uh, 
in this chapter also is discussed how the only way to remove attachment through sense gratification, material desires, is to engage deeply in devotional service. In the earlier part of the sixth canto, there's a verse, famous verse, Kevalaya Bhaktya, Pasudeva Pran, Ahamdur Mantri Kasnaya, Niharavya Bhaskara, just as fog is removed by the sun, when the sun rises, the fog dissipates. Similarly, all material desires and distractions dissipate once we develop an attachment for devotional service. And if you don't have an attachment for devotional service, performing devotional service will produce attachment for devotional service, which is the magic of it. Right? So, it's also, here, there's also a social commentary, though the Bhagavatam doesn't really focus too much on these things. There's the, the nature of materialistic people is described. In this particular verse, there's materialistic women, but as many of our spiritual masters have explained, anybody can act as a woman. They don't have to be in a female body as a woman. You know? And we can see that around the world. So, the nature of materialistic people in general is very dangerous, but still, Performance of devotional service, even by such people, will purify and uplift them. Okay? Another commentary here is how someone comes to serve, but their motive is arterial. Indra came to serve his father. Right? Serve. But what he was looking for is an opportunity to find fault. He was looking for one opportunity to find fault so he can go and kill the embryo. That was his, his motive. You can think about it, how, it, how amazing it is. So, a similar person appeared in Krishna's hands. Can you tell who that is? Putana. Uh, Putana, Puta. Puta. yes. Putana is the person who came as mother but wanted to kill the baby, right? Similarly, Indra came as a servant of his mother but wanted to kill her. Kashyapuni is his father, right? So, therefore, so you can see how it is. You know, so in the materialistic world, people often find faults. They are trying to find a mistake. You know, they, they are not be. So you have to, when we are dealing with materialistic people, you have to be super, super careful. Like they say, when you shake hands to a materialistic person, count your fingers. <laughs> right? So that works. Okay. And after you have all your fingers still here. Okay. So Bhagavad Bhagavad Swaraj says that never give your heart to a materialistic person. Never give your heart to a materialistic person because what will they do? They will barbecue it and they will eat it. Because that's their nature. Okay. So never do that. Be very careful who you trust with. Who you trust with your, with your, you know, you have, you have to be very clear about who you trust. Okay, that's really important. Anyways, the embryo was saved by Krishna. Krishna saved another embryo. Who is that? Rikshit Maharaj. So Rikshit Maharaj. So there's a comparison made between the 49 Maruts and Parikshit Maharaj in this chapter. Huh? So why is it that the Maruts who were born of a materialistic desire of Dhi were actually equated to a pure devotee like Maharaj Parikshit? Because his mother formed devotional service. Right? So because of the devotional service of, of this Bharat's mother, they were uplifted. They were born in a auspicious environment. So when a mother performs devotional service, especially when she is pregnant with a child, and that is most auspicious for a child. Right? So it's, there's a whole procedure recommended where the mother and the father are supposed to perform devotional service very intensely before they have, try to have a child and then and then continue their devotional service. That is, that is what is um, um, samskara. Samskara is not a moment in time when you sit there and um, uh, or he is fire. Samskara is, means what your parents have done before you were born, when you were still in the womb, after you were born, what are the vibrations going on in your home, is it the Bhagavatam or is it the television? Right? So this is very important. These are towards samskara. And when we perform devotional service, gradually the old samskaras get inadequate. Know, whatever might be, and they get replaced by the culture of the father. Okay, so that's that's an important thing. Later on, in the end, even if somebody might be inimical, but honest behavior, hearts can be melted. So this is very important. We can split up. We can have fights. So that that can happen. Unavoidable in the material world. But after that, honest behavior by both sides will melt the hearts and bring them even closer together. Before. So just because we have had a fight with someone does not mean that we can make up with them, but the center of Krishna. We cannot make up with them like what is happening in the United Nations. That, that will never be peace because none of them have that honest, loving behavior with each other. So amongst devotees, we should have that sense that yes, we had standing, yes, we had some trouble, yes, we had a fight, yes, we did this, that other person, but if both parties bring forward honest behavior, and this has happened in my life with so many devotees, 
If we can have honest behavior on both sides, then the relation becomes stronger than ever before. Notice that Diti did not have any enmity towards Indra afterwards, after this happened. Even though, technically speaking, he killed her children. Right? And she did not say, oh, this Indra, he tried to punch her. Just this. It's, 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 it's a miracle that something else happened. She did not keep that in her heart. She let it go. Right? So even if somebody has hurt us, hurt us by Krishna's mercy, we let it go, provided that for a materialistic person. Materialist person, keep your respect. Be very careful. Okay. okay, now we'll come back to the main topic of this class. Okay, so Aradhyatma Pradam Devam Swatmanam Jagadishwaram Kovri Tagunas Karsham Buddha Syam Narakapia. There are two key things here that I would like to focus on. One is Gunas Karsham. First of all, the person doing devotional service and trying to do Gunas Karsham. Okay, that is one thing. And then, and this verse actually. Very interesting that material happiness is available where? Even in hell. We will discuss that just a little bit before we take questions and comments. Okay? So, first of all, everybody has ambition. Everybody has some ambition. Somebody wants to become the CEO of some company. Somebody wants to become the businessman on the planet. Somebody wants to earn a PhD. Somebody wants to, you know, get power and following. They want to, you know, have people there. You know, they want to become famous. You might want to, you know, become a big bodybuilder, for example, or some, or some beauty queen, right? So many different ambitions people have. Somebody wants to become an actor or actress. Somebody wants to write poetry and be known for their poetry. Somebody wants to study a lot of books and be known as knowledgeable and wise. Different people have different ambitions. Okay. So the different ambitions, we should not get distracted by them, but we should try to understand what is the goal of this ambition. If somebody wants money, why do they want money? If somebody wants a good wife or a good husband, why do they want that? And why do they want this? Why do they want that? Go deep into understanding the goal of the ambition. Ambition, why somebody wants ambition. Now, if somebody wants some kind of something, when we focus on the goal, we understand that they want happiness. They want ananda. Right? Everybody wants it. Right? But then we know that because I am a spirit soul, because that person is a spirit soul, they will never be happy unless they get Krishna. Unless they get become Krishna conscious, and unless they become Krishna servant, they will never ever be happy. So, when we are going out there in the world, we should, and we are telling somebody about Krishna, we should not be nervous that we are taking them away from their ambition. We should be fully confident. Actually, we are directing them to the goal of all their ambitions. Why do you become an actress? Why do you want to become a CEO? What is it? Okay, you keep doing it, but why do you want to do it? What is it that you want to get out of it? You will not get what you are looking for. Somebody wins the election, does that make them happy? Yes, maybe for a night. The next morning, the headache of the administration of their heads. Right? People are criticizing them. Right? So, no. so actually, becoming Krishna, become Krishna conscious is the only way to happiness. Now Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mahayam Amsha Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhutta Sanatana, Mana Shikhtani Indyanani, Prakriti Sthani Karshati. So you see there is a connection between every verse of the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam. Prakriti Sthani Karshati. Krishna recognizes that they are fighting with their senses. They are fighting with material nature. Prakriti Sthani Karshati. Mahayam Amsha Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhutta Sanatana. They are eternal and they are my part and parcel. Krishna is expressing the Foolishness of these living entities who are fighting in material nature, fighting with their senses. Constantly. Karshati, fighting, fighting, fighting. With each other also. Because anybody who impedes my sense of application becomes an enemy. I must destroy that person. Right? It's, that's how it comes. So Krishna is describing that. The other thing is the and if an intelligent man serves the most dear Lord who gives himself his words, what was Diti's purpose? She wanted a Son to kill Indra. But let's see how Krishna arranged everything so that not only did she not want to kill Indra anymore, he became her dear son. And she got 49 demigods. So Diti is not just the mother of the demons, she's also the mother of the demigods. Because if you think about it, that was her desire. Aditi has all these nice, uh, effulgent sons that I have, all my sons. So she had that desire in her heart. Aditi had only 12 sons. 
Niti got 49. But whose actions by internal actions? So both were envious. Right? But the way if you if you put envious people together and put Krishna in the middle, both of them will be sad. And both of them will get more than they ever imagined. They got 49 brothers. Can you imagine that? Like he got 49 brothers, 49 others. Practically, you know, even though they were Daityas, uh, they are still demigods, right? They were saintly persons, right? So, you see, putting Krishna in the middle uh, solves problems. So, don't like, especially when I was preaching, or sometimes it happens that we, we are hesitant to introduce Krishna in some conversation because we feel, no, will it be good for them? Will they accept it? No, it doesn't matter. Just introduce Krishna, anyways, somehow or the other. Right? Whether they know it or not, sometimes you may mention Krishna by name. Does not mention Krishna by name, but just you thinking about Krishna while interacting with someone will benefit them. They are envious. Okay, so that's an important thing to, to know. And then the next point to be understood here is that material sense gratification is available in hell. Now this might raise a question. Right? So hell is meant for protection. There is material sense gratification in hell. Now look around the world where we live in. Is it heaven or is it hell? It is hell only, right? right? This old age. Huh? We can ask the people who are experiencing old age what it is like. And Sri Prabhupada said, don't think this will not happen to you. <laughs> Sri Prabhupada said that. Prabhupada told tells a story when they were in Vrindavan and was around. Somebody gifted Prabhupada a nice walking stick. Prabhupada accepted the stick. And Prabhupada to detect what the disciples were thinking. In their 20s and 30s, young people, and they were looking at the walking stick, they were looking at the man who brought it and they were looking at the Prabhupada. Prabhupada took the walking stick, he accepted it from this gentleman, and he said, to, he pointed the stick at everybody and he said, don't think this will not happen to you. And every time you, you meet Shubhulas Prabhu, anytime, and ask him about his walking stick, he will tell you the story. He was there, person. So we have many devotees who are experiencing old age, right? I'm in the class for starting to Right? And any other devotees, you can ask your spiritual master, you can see their tradition, you know that this world is no heaven, for sure. Right? And uh, then you start thinking about other problems, all the children who are dying in wars, or the children who are killed in the wombs of their mothers, right? the old people who are just thrown out, right? people who are just murdered. Right? So many things are happening right on the streets, right outside us. Right? People who are being abused, traffic, so many things. Right? You know, once, anyways, I won't mention that story. I can't say it, but so the world is a hell. But is there material sense gratification here? There is. People are trying to get material sense gratification. And all kinds of travels and all kinds of tribulations, all kinds of trials, just to get a little bit of sense okay. gratification. So just as in this particular hell there is material sense gratification, in the other hells also, like poo and there's so many other we have, we have studied it in chapter 5, where it's a description of all the different hellish planets. There is also some material sense gratification. What is the sense gratification in Krivi Bhojan? Krivi Bhojan, you know this planet? It's a planet which is full of only ocean. You should read the Bhagavad Gita. So, fifth canto, we already covered it, or maybe not that particular verse, but there's a particular planet in which there's a huge ocean only, there's a water, only water. Right? And inside the water there are creamies, insects, worms. Worms are inside. Okay? And I don't remember it's 100,000 yojanas or 200,000 yojanas. That's the length of the thing that you have to cross. So basically it's like a you know it's like a game, like a video game. You have to cross a certain level, okay? So you have to cross a you have you can cross one yojana per lifetime. Right? In your life. And the next lifetime born again in Trivi Vojan. Another yojana you cross. Another lifetime, another yojana. Another lifetime, another yojana. Another lifetime, another yojana. And so on, so on, so on. And there are only primis, right? Worms only. So what is the activity of the worms? One worm eats the other worm. So somebody who is interested in, for example, vegetarian food, you know, not prasadam, uh, is sent to primi worm. You can eat to their heart's content. As many worms as you like. But then you don't know if there's another bigger worm about it. Right? So it's so that 
that thing is there. So, so, so that is what, so, so Prime Bhojan, what is the sense of the idea of Prime Bhojan? Eat. You are a worm, eat another worm, eat. Right? So even the hellish planet called Prime Bhojan, there is some sense gratification. So every hellish planet you study, there is some kind of sense gratification involved in that. Okay? So just like this, it's not even a hellish planet really, but there is a hell component to this planet. There is available. So material sense that means available everywhere. Even if you are on this planet and you are the body of a dog or a pig, right? There is so much sense gratification available. The experience of eating too much, for example, is available to all animals. Experience of sleeping available to all animals and birds, right? But it's mixed with some kind of terror. Like a bird is worried the whole night. Is somebody going to come and you know some snake, right? Calling up to, to catch me, right? So this is there. In every sense of application, there is a tinge of discomfort. Okay. So when this is available in hellish planets also, then why? Once we have attained to the platform of devotional service in some respect, why on earth should we go out and sense gratification? Why should we do this? Right? So Sri Prabhupada translates that intelligent man serves the most dear Lord, gives himself to the devotees. There's a verse again in the sixth canto about uh, the beginning of the sixth canto. There's a verse that says, Yes, if you approach the Supreme Personality of God, first of all, there's a original verse, Akama Sarva Moksha Kamudaraji. That's the first one. You have desires, full of desires, no desires, desire liberation, right? Or whatever your condition might be, worship the Supreme Personality of God. Why? Even if you have desires, Satyam Nishati Artikam Artikam Nanam, Mevardhu Yatpura Artikam Vetaha. So, yes, approach the Supreme Personality of God. Though you cannot be called an intelligent person at that point in time, but the Lord will make you intelligent. So Lord Swayam Vidathe Bhajata Anichata. You approach for material desires, you will grant your material desires. She wanted a son, she got 49. Right? She got it. But the way she got it, her heart was purified, her heart was cleansed. So similarly, even though no many people don't come, somebody might come here because rent is too expensive outside. Doesn't matter. Somebody might come here because they're sick of working in a material world. Doesn't matter. Somebody might come here just because they love the prasadam. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter why they come in here. You cannot that person because that person after coming here will be purified gradually. And a person who does not get purified will be hunted out by themselves. Right? They will make the decision that will take them away from. Okay, so intelligent person will stay, whether they stay in the temple or not, they'll leave. Right? But whether they stay in devotional service or not is what is important, wherever they are. Wherever they might be, whatever circumstances they might be, stay in devotional service. So, intelligent person strives for devotional service and strives to become a servant. A famous song by a saint from South India named Purandar Dasa, known as the father of classical music, Carnatic classical music. He says, he is Purandar Dasa, but he is singing, Dasa ne maari ko yenna. He is saying, he is your servant. He is a servant. He is Purandar Dasa, initiated by Dasa Tirtha. Part of the succession as Purandara Dasa, the eternal, the servant of the eternal, Nityo Nityanam, Chetanas Chetanam, servant of that person. He is saying, Dasa Mali Koyana Swami, Dasa Mali, please make me a servant. So, the Das does not think that he is a Das. He is thinking that he wants to become a Das. You know, so some people write that you are aspiring servant. Not your servant, but you are aspiring servant. So that's the moon that you are supposed to have. Okay? So stop here. If there are questions, comments, or challenges, we can take those. And then we can uh, go to the next part of the program. Somebody said it was the last part of the morning program. Actually, the last part of the morning program is breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Through my question, uh, thank you for a wonderful class, first of all. Thank you very much. My thank question you. was that, uh, like you said, that both parents need to be in that state of the mind to have a kid. Mm. So here, Diti was not in that mindset. She wanted to have a son with mm -hmm. But her husband was a very saintly person, right? Mm -hmm. So, despite him being so saintly, and she not being very saintly and having that desire, still she got Hiranya Kashupu and Hiranyaksh previously. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was because it was unavoidable. 
because she had expressed a desire at a particular time when good children cannot be born. And right, so there's a particular you know auspicious time when some when someone is conceived, then they are likely to be affected by all sorts of negative energies. So and they had the power of Kashyapa. It was Kashyapa they were born. So they were powerful but not sentient. And that was because of the inauspicious time. But, the way the desire was expressed, right? And then it was unavoidable. But in the like, you, you look at the big picture. It was Krishna's arrangement, actually. So one can say that Hiranyakashipu and Naksha both gave pleasure to the Lord, though not in devotional sense. Mm -hmm. So that means, Prabhu, that I mean, forgetting this thing for a second, but that means that whatever we do for our Krishna consciousness, whatever, how we conduct ourselves in our life, with how we're living. So every more important from the every time to what matters. we say to... Yes. Antakale mame vas maran mukhva kale ram yapaya pisam bhavam yati nasam shayam yam yam vapis maran bhavam yajat yante kale ram samtamay vaiti kam deya sada bhava bhavasha The moment of death is super significant. The moment of death is the sum total, the culmination, the when you, when you take a huge equation, right? So many factors. Imagine a polynomial or some differential equation or something like that. And you have like many, many, many factors. If you get infinite series, right? Take an infinite series. The infinite series totals up to some. If I total up to zero or one or minus one, whatever that be, like whatever the total might be, or infinity, whatever that might be, it totals up to something. So the moment of death is that total, is the thing that is after the equal to sign. You have your whole life, this plus, this minus, this plus, minus, this minus, this into this into minus, you know, all this. You have this whole life of experience, infinite series of events and activities that we have set into motion. Equal to question, that that is the moment of death for us in human life. So that's why everything that we do adds up. And uh, it's, it's super important that's why to be conscious of what we are. That's what it means. Am I Krishna conscious or not? I had an experience with my spiritual master, Shankarshan Prabhu, once in an elevator. And we were taking him up to our apartment, putting him on the fifth floor, and for a second he looked at the news. And then the elevator uh, door opened, ting, and that ting woke him up from his 20 seconds of non Krishna consciousness, according to him, anyways. And then he said, It was like it was like I had he was, he was feeling like that. I had a fall down. <laughs> right? For us it's like remembering a, is, is a is a rare thing. And for, for someone like me anyways. And but for advanced body, like a moment of their stand was higher. General, we see that boys are like their mothers in their nature, and girls are like their fathers in their nature. In general, we see that it's not a rule, but it's a general uh, thing. You know, we see that the nature, the personality is like that. There's a, actually, it all matters. Everything matters, but it's um, just as Prahlad was born in the house of. I was saying earlier that voting can anywhere, just like a demon can appear anywhere. Right? Right? Hiranyakashipu was the son of Kashyap, but he was demoniac. Prahlad was the son of Hiranyakashipu, but he was saying this. You see what I mean? So it can happen that uh, you know a, a soul has to appear in a certain circumstance. Like for example, take the disciples of Jesus. They were born in America and Europe, in South America and so on and so forth, right? But Srila Prabhupada says that they were all Brahmanas in their previous life. So why were they born in richer families, families in which cows are being eaten? Why? Because they had to assist Srila Prabhupada in his mission. Right? So they are saintly souls. Immediately when they came, became 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, they left everything and they joined Shira Prabhupada wholeheartedly. Right? They gave everything. I haven't given even a fraction of what they have given. Right? 
but they are given everything. And so that is, so they can afford to appear anywhere. Yeah, Sayam, Sayam person is mentioned here, right? So there are different uh, sacrifices mentioned here. So for example, uh, I wanted a few. The Vratas, Agnihotra Yadya is a, is a person. Agnihotra is a person, right? The Chatur Vasya, Vrat that we are following from today, no greenly vegetables for one, is a person in charge of that Chatur Vasya. I should by the way, I say that everybody should follow. Whether you're a sannyasi or a Vrasa or whatever. No baby vegetables for one month. So that's starting today. Time of day, Siam is mentioned there. There's so many other, you know, there are, there are so many personalities mentioned throughout the Bhagavata okay, in various cantos. So that is the person in charge of wealth, for example, in charge of Smriti and Dhati and so many different personalities are mentioned. There's the original. Designation, but that particular person is their son. So in the bottom, you will see that the future Indra has been mentioned. The next Indra is who? Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj. He is the next Indra. He is in He is waiting to take his post. Right? So when the present Indra dies or moves on from his post, he will be replaced by Bali Maharaj. Why? Because he desired to become, the, even, even there was pure devotee, he is pure devotee, he had a material desire, he desired to fulfill that. He wanted this way, just like Guru Maharaj. He wanted this way. He wanted a kingdom greater than your father and grandfather hated. Okay. So yes, so Tiam Dishati Arthikamatana now. Yes, yes, it's true. And he whatever you have come to him asking for. But how he gives Satyati Arthikamatana now? Naivar Tado Yatpuna Rakito Yata. Bali Maharaj will never express their desire, material desire ever again. Guru Maharaj will never express their material desire ever again. So on half course means Param Nayasi. Right? That was his nature. As soon as he left. So, similarly, even us, we will be in the same situation where the request for material desires will end. But Krishna will grant all those desires in such a way that new desires won't be created. Whereas you get them from other demigods like Lord, Lord Brahma or Indra or Chandra or whatever, they will give rise to more. Every desire gives rise to more desires, like a multi branched forest continuously growing on. But if you ask Krishna, you will give the desire, but you will give the desire, no, no. Any other questions? We are out of time. Um, so, how can we stop buying material uh, happiness? And is it through knowledge? Because it says um, the knowledge of person. How can we stop desiring material happiness? Um, you just have to get a taste of devotional happiness. And then you will compare the two. You will see your experiences in which somebody, whether you want it or not yourself, you will see your experiences in somebody had a desire to experience, I don't know, some kind of sensual experience, for example, right? But they may remember what happened after that sensual experience. And they'll say, that is not good because that's how this ended up. Right? They will get that by yourself. As you get a more and more of a taste for devotional experiences, the Yanmai Tuna Digrahame Dukham Hi Ducham Kandu Yanen Karayori Vadukha Dukham Tripyan Tineha Kripanam Hudukha Bhajam Kandu Tijam Vishahet Dheera So this is described as, you know sometimes, I don't know, you are not old enough for that, but sometimes your your hands itch. Soft, I don't know, so anybody that feels, yeah, sometimes it's your hand itch. And then it feels kind of pleasurable to scratch them. Right? Or some other part of your body which is dry, especially, they itch, and then you start scratching it. But Philoropa says, you scratch it, you scratch it, you scratch it, and then there will be blood. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, so he explored this to Ahmad Prabhu, who is from South India, from, from Kerala, and he, the way he says it, it is. Malayalam accent, Lord. 
He is he's saying Srila Prabhupada, what Srila Prabhupada is in, in a different accent. So, so it's like that. Right? So, I think the, what you simply have to do is recognize that these materialistic desires are like itching on the palms of some other part of the body and that uh, really we need not scratch it. Right? For example, or you may take some vitamins and some things could be related to other disorders of the body, etc. So, you don't separately have to try to get rid of them. You just have to figure out, I have this desire. Name desire, any material desire. Not even yours, just name any material desire. Uh, to have a PhD. To have a PhD, okay. So you're like, how can I engage this desire in the service of Krishna? Okay, so if I get a PhD, then I will get a job as a professor. Or whatever, and then I can have this social. So, if that is it, then you will get a PhD, but you won't have need to get another PhD, for example. Like a lot of people do two PhDs or three PhDs, they never stop, right? Why do they do that? So, so figure, that's what we need to do, and that's what Kashyap Muni did, you see here. He did not say, no, I will not give you a son. <laughs> he did not say, he did not, because the moment you say no, the desire actually becomes stronger. Right? It becomes insistent, right? insistent. So you have to figure out, how they like, look almost like a child, you know. The moment you say no to a child, then the child becomes like crazy, you know. It goes further and further. If you have siblings, you might experience that. Right? So, so what do we do? We engage, figure out how to engage that desire in service of Krishna. Does this make sense? Yes. Right? And that's what the expert spiritual master does also. When you approach a spiritual master, tell them what you want. Some people who went and go and say, I want to get married, you know. Or here's a nice girl. <laughs> and then here's a sugar exactly what is the sign of marriage. And then they experience what marriage is like. Some people could make it, some people. But what if you see that and then but you still want those things? Like you know, okay, if I get the PhD it's gonna be so much work and I'm gonna be so distracted. No, then do it. Other people. Then do it. Then do it. Like it's a, it, it's not that you have to stop yourself, you have to just continue to continue your Krishna your practice of Krishna consciousness. So in general it is also said that if a certain psychophysical nature, like if somebody has a psychophysical physical nature to control people, right? And they say, no, I'm not going to control people, they will go try to control someone else. They will meant to drive their family members crazy. Right? No, just go to some workplace for people there. Like don't come here and like <laughs> right? just like somebody might want to cook massive peas, like Varata Prabhu, for example. You say no cooking for you. <laughs> what will Varata Prabhu do, right? Yeah, he will, he will have to cook somewhere, go to work in a restaurant. Right? So every person, like for example, I love to speak, for example. My spiritual master is like, this, this fool loves to speak, how can I get him to speak for Krishna? <laughs> right? That's how, so so this person loves to sing and show off, for example. Okay, engage with Kirtan, they will be purified. Right? So that, that's how uh, it is. Somebody lo loves to dress really flamboyant. Okay, put them in a drum. Right? Uh, let them dress for our body, let them go on a stage. Right? Let, but let them do it for Krishna. So that's the idea. Right? That's what Kashyap only did. This word, this this um, Umsavana vow is actually a vow of Krishna consciousness. And at the end of it, because she's so sincerely, she was purified of all her. So that's it. What that's what we need. If you want to go to a PhD, go to a PhD. It's even more, you know, even even better. Uh, you know, because there's often this narrative that People who pursue spiritual life are atheists, right? Uh, there's, there are papers out there that says, oh, here's the IQ of people who believe in God, here's the IQ of people who believe in God. Uh, dumb people believe in God, smart people don't believe in God, right? Uh, it's, that the whole thing is flawed, I mean, the whole research is flawed. But then, yeah, go get a PhD and, 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 and fight. Swarup so, Damodar Goswami, who is a disciple of Shri Prabhupada, had a PhD. He was a PhD in him, and he, he wrote the scientific basis of Krishna consciousness. Have you read the book? No. Read the book. The Have you read it? No. I wanted to add something else. Sure, sure, you can add something. But if you don't have this book, just check out the book, Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness. A small book, tiny little one. Right? Written by Sarut Bhavad Goswami, who was a you know a PhD. Right? There are other PhDs, Michael Kremo, right? Dr. Kremo Prabhu is a PhD. Sada Sada Prabhu, a PhD. Ravinda Suru Prabhu, PhD. Right? Mother Urmila. PhD, right? So many 
US-based cancer research in India. They had one sheet called the distress thermometer. That thermometer would ask these cancer suffering patients how are they feeling. Scale of 10. Scale of 10 and a lot of questions, a lot of factors, like small, small checklist. One question on that NCCN questionnaire was spirituality. Yes or no? Are you spiritual? Are you not spiritual? Uh -huh. And their research said any person who's spiritual deals with cancer so much better. That is why they put that as a separate question ah. on their distress thermometer. And over time, when for six years I worked with people with cancer, when they're going through radiation therapy, you could see such a stark difference in people who are spiritual, even going through the toughest situations. They were so much stronger and resilient as compared to people who were not holding on to someone's weakest of faiths. That's a great point. So this just came to my mind when you said that some of these papers say that people who are spiritual have no IQ. <laughs> yeah. But if you actually do more researches, there are some really credible backings which yeah. say... Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I read that paper and it was flawed. There were so many issues with that. It was completely... Uh, uh, it was flawed. But anyways... Uh, yeah. Okay, makes sense. So the material designers are not... Make sure uh, Gopanu Prabhu, who is my instructing spiritual master, who is here in the community, uh, very uh, amazing. He said, don't worry about anything else, just add Krishna. Just keep adding Krishna. Just, just insert Krishna, he will make room for himself and he will make everything else. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Jai. 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 Jai